Hello everyone, I'm Greg. Welcome back to Watchpoint and this time we're going to talk about GDB and threads and debugging threaded programs. Now I hear from time to time people say things like GDB doesn't work very well with multi-threaded programs and I, I, I don't really understand why people say that. I have a couple of theories. One I think is it's just like outdated information and if you're talking from 10, 15 years ago then yeah fair enough it was a bit ropey. Long since um, it's been pretty pretty solid. Uh, the other thing I think is people often misunderstand like what it's trying to do, how it's supposed to work, and particularly with like what threads are supposed to run when. So I want to show you that. And then a couple of other tips and tricks. So uh, yeah, let's take a really simple program. And this program just creates uh, four threads. Each one runs this looper function and they just spin around. Each thread is just going to increment to the next letter in the alphabet and print it out. Uh, easier is probably just to show you that. Um, let's do that. Uh, so that's my program, and uh, here we go. So all for pr all for worker threads, each printing the next character in the alphabet and looping around. Um, let's run that in GDB. Now, one thing, um, by the way, I think people uh, misunderstand is this program is now running inside the debugger, and it's running at full speed. Okay, GDB is completely out of the way. Um, yes, it's attached, but it's running at full speed. Uh, the only like exceptions to this are if threads are being created and destroyed while the program is running, then that's going to slow down a little bit. GDB is going to get its get its fingers in and, and and try and monitor that, and that will that will slow things down slightly. Um, and uh, if there are dynamic libraries being loaded and unloaded as the program is running, again, that's going to slow things down. Um, but in this case, like I think most programs, the threads get created at the beginning and destroyed at the end. And shared libraries get loaded at the beginning and that's don't get unloaded and loaded during the running of the program. So the program now is running at full speed and your program probably will too. Um, the other exception is when there are signals flying around. If you've got signals uh, being received by threads and those threads are handling signals, then that will also be slower run when running under GDB. Uh, but again, most programs don't do that most of the time. So most programs will run um, you know, just full speed when, when running under GDB, which is cool. Right, let's send the signal. Control C at the keyboard is uh, generates a sigint. That's how that works. And this is going to go to, it's not actually defined which thread is going to receive the sigint, though in practice, usually thread one will. Uh, info threads, you probably know about this. Um, but let's just look about what we're actually seeing here. So we've got threads one, two, three, four, five. This is the ID, this is the uh, GDB ID of the thread. And the asterisk here tells me that uh, thread one is the selected thread. That's the GDB. That's the thread GDB is currently looking at. So if I do backtrace, that's the backtrace of thread one. Um, then we have the target ID listed here. So we got this thread blah, this pointer type value. That's the P threads um, ID. It's an opaque pointer. So we do P thread self or something. That's what you get. And then we've got what Linux sees as a thread. It actually calls it here LWP. LWP stands for lightweight process. I think that was defined by Solaris or one of those Unixes um, because the earlier Unixes didn't have any threads at all. Um, and then threads got created and they got called, get, got called lightweight processes and that name's kind of stuck. Um, it, and and this, is the, so this is the process ID, the thread ID, PID, TID, however you call it, pronounce it. Um, in Linux, it's worth saying that there is no such thing really as a thread. There's just tasks. Um, so a process, what we call a process, what POSIX calls a process, Linux really thinks of as a task group, um, and that's just a bunch of tasks that share an address space, share signal handlers, and other things like that. Um, and they all live in the same namespace, this 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 ID. And so yeah, here's my PID, TID. If I'm going to do kill or something at the command line, I'd, I'd, I'd use that, that ID, ID, right? And then we've got the name. So the name of thread one, well, that's what I called my program, dash O threads, when I compiled it. So that's what it gets called. And then we've got this worker 0123. That's because, just go back to my code here a moment. That's because I set the name here with this pthread set name NP. The NP just stands for non-portable because it's not actually part of POSIX, but it is generally available in Linux. Um, and I give it a human, I can give my threads a human readable name. And that's just really useful. Uh, you know, I can see that in top, I can see that in slash proc, and I can see that when I'm debugging. Um, I can just know what thread's doing what. So that's a, a useful little trick there. Um, yeah, let's go back into GDB. So, um, yeah, no, I think the, the thing people, I think, are often confused about is like when I do next and step and things like what thread's supposed to run. Um, so uh, let's select different threads. I'm going to select thread two. 
um, and backtrace again. And so I can see it's in libc here. Um, that's my code there. So if I finish a few times, let's, let's enable TUI mode and then finish a couple of times. Finish if you don't know by the way, it's like up it, 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 in, in that it goes to the, the calling call frame, but it runs the program until that call, until that frame completes. It runs until the return um, uh, rather than up, which doesn't actually move the program. So I'm running from program back until now I'm in, now I'm in my code. Now I can kind of see what's going on. So if I do next now, we can see it's running a line and it's always kind of within this thread, right? So I selected thread two and thread two is still selected. Thread two will remain selected until I select a different thread or until a different thread receives a signal or hits a breakpoint. Um, and so, yeah, that's um, all fine. Now let me, let me disp spinners. So spinners is my, uh, my array here of these the characters. That's what all my threads are up to there. That's their, each of their place in the alphabet. And uh, if I do next, let's go next round the loop until I get to the beginning. So I've selected thread two. So that, that's the first worker thread. So it's currently at J. If I do next once more, yeah, J has gone to K. Right. But look at all these others, right? All the others have gone forward loads, like M went to O and then R and then Z. Uh, K has gone all the way to W. So what's happening is we're staying inside thread two, because that's the selected thread, inside the GDB view of the world. But when I do next, GDB is going to not only run thread two forwards one line, it runs all of the threads forward some indeterminate amount. In fact, when thread two's done its one in line in internally, like it hits a breakpoint, GDB gets control back, and then it stops all the other threads. So that's why the other threads actually make more progress than the thread that I've selected. And this, I think, is one of the things that kind of causes people to get a little bit confused. And once you understand that, it makes a lot more sense. If you don't like that, we can set scheduler locking on, and then it's gonna next only, gonna move forwards only the currently selected thread. So I'll show you that in just a moment. But just before I do that, I just want to say, if you do enjoy the content, please do like and subscribe, right? Really helps me, gives me the feedback, but also helps, you know, boost on the rankings, which is just going to be more of this stuff gets created and you get alerted when, when new stuff comes along. So you get to see all the good stuff too. So yes, set schedule locking on. So now when I do next, now look, ZWS, ZWS, none of the other threads ran. Okay, so only the selected thread is moving when I do next. Now you might think, why isn't that the default? That is kind of a bit more intuitive, right? Um, but let's do another next. And, oh, I'm stuck. And I'm stuck because printf is, there's a lock inside the libc implementation of printf, actually inside write, and uh, another thread has that lock. So if I control C, generates a sigint. Oh, look, this time thread two got the sigint, not thread one. That's because only thread two was running. And um, and then I do info threads again. I can see that, yeah, two, three, four. They're all in this Futex wait. If ever you see Futex wait, almost certainly is stopped on some kind of lock. And thread four is in libc write. So thread four has the lock, the lock that's inside libc. Now my program doesn't have any locks, right? It's just inside libc. So, so it can be very confusing. Um, but if you understand that, then it also makes a bit more sense. If I select thread four and now finish out of that a few stack frames so we get back into our code. There we are. And now, now it's all good. So that's thread four. So that's going to update this X, I think. Yeah, X goes to Y. And I can just keep it going to Z. Da, 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 da. And uh, none of the other threads are moving. Okay, so all... Uh, uh, that's good, isn't it, right? That makes more sense. And it means that I don't have to worry about, you know, other threads coming and like messing about with my data structure while I'm stepping through and stuff. As long as I know, I understand this issue of uh, what happened before was thread two wanted the lock, thread four had the lock, but thread four wasn't running because thread two was selected and the schedule locking was on. So thread two weren't ever gonna get the lock. Um, so as long as you understand that, then it all kind of makes a lot more sense, right? Um, you can, uh, it's all, same applies for continue even. So I continue, only that thread forward is running, the other threads are stopped. Maybe I don't want that. Um, if I just want it to be just for steps, I can do set scheduler locking step. And then um, only the selected thread will run when I do next or step or finish or something like that. But when I give you continue, all the threads run. Cool, so that's uh, scheduler locking and what threads run when. Um, the thread that's selected, yeah, I just want to, I touched on that, I just want to say it again. So the thread that's selected will remain the same until you choose a new one with thread N 
and to, or another thread receives a signal, um, which might be control C at the keyboard, or it might be get sig alarm or seg V or something, and then that will become the selected thread. Uh, or another thread hits a breakpoint, and in which case that will become the selected thread. So yeah, if I um, actually let's uh, finish out of that again. Oh, um, uh, I had thread one selected, so that's never going to finish because it's in thread short piece of join. Thread two selected. Let's finish out of that. Uh, yeah, so let's put a breakpoint. Let's put a breakpoint on line twenty, um, and now um, set scheduler locking off. And now, so what are we now? We're now thread two, and I continue, and uh, it's potluck which thread's going to hit that breakpoint first. This time, it just happened to be thread three, and so that becomes now the selected threads. The other threads have probably all hit that breakpoint actually. So in the time thread three hit the breakpoint, then GDB got alerted to that. Then GDB stopped all the other threads. By the time it stopped all the other threads, they probably all hit that breakpoint. But only the first one to hit the breakpoint is kind of like registered and reported by GDB as hitting the breakpoint. Cool. Um, so that's kind of the bulk of it, really. A couple of other things I just want to mention while I'm here because they're just kind of handy. Um, you may know about this one, thread um, apply all. So then I can do a command on all of the threads, like print the program counter. Look at that. Uh, um, let's turn to mode off so that um, I can see that a bit more. So yeah, so thread apply all. Um, it kind of goes in descending order here. So if I want that to go uh, in a, uh, ascending order, I can do it like that. Uh, doesn't have to be all the threads. I can go thread apply uh, four to five. Uh, print. Uh, let's print the address of Erno. Erno is thread local, right? So every thread will have a different um, a different address there. Um, yeah. If that's too much typing for you, you can just do thread apply all s tas uh, print uh, print Erno. The, uh, the S, by the way, stands for silent. So um, by default, when there's an error, it will just stop. Um, but if I do TAS, that, then it silently just ignores any errors. Um, maybe that, you know, maybe you're trying to print a variable that doesn't exist in that thread stack frame or something like that. Um, yeah, so that's quite handy. The other thing I think I just want to mention while, while we're here is non-stop mode. Um, so maybe my multi-threaded program is really important that some of the threads like keep running. Like maybe there's like a a, um, a heartbeat or a watchdog type thing. And if that doesn't get, you know, service, then the program gets killed or, or you know, some, some such thing. And so when I break that, now I would say in those scenarios, um, you know, maybe, or maybe it's a client server application and, and there's something at the other end of the network and that's going to time out and then cause all things to fall apart. I would say um, in those scenarios, actually, best way, just run with recording, right? You time travel, take a recording and then everything's running and then you can debug at your leisure later. Um, but if you don't want to do that or you can't do that, then there is non-stop mode. Now, unfortunately, non-stop mode um, can't be turned on um, dynamically. You have to turn it on when the program's not running. So let's just kill that and let's turn on non-stop mode. So what non-stop mode means is when GDB stops, because thread hits a breakpoint, gets a signal, whatever, uh, it keeps the other threads running. And so control, uh, so if I, uh, I've got the breakpoints are still set. So let's delete all the breakpoints and let's continue. Um, let's restart that. So now control C, now all the threads keep keep running, right? So I go thread three. Um, now this is kind of a mess because GDB and my program are like sharing terminal. So it's kind of not really super usable like this, but what you would normally do is attach and then your GDB is on one terminal, your program's on another terminal, and then it kind of works much better. And um, uh, yeah, the rest of the program just keeps just keeps on running. Uh, this one is, I think, it's not fully robust. It's well, I've seen GDB seg fault quite a lot uh, in non-stop mode, to be honest. So it's like you you use it kind of at your risk, but but it does work. Um, and sometimes you know that can be very very useful. So great, that's all I want to talk about GDB and threads. Hopefully you understand a bit more about it and you agree with me that GDB is really good at debugging multi-threaded programs. And um, and and uh, so much so that you will remember to like and subscribe. And that's it, see you next time.